um, actually, first things first, I feel like this has been billed as a bioscience uh, science show off uh, and confession. I am not a biologist, I am a chemist. Uh, and, uh, yeah, don't. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, and actually, the last time that I even came close to doing any biology was during the first year of my undergraduate chemistry degree. Uh, when I had to do biochemistry as a module, so not even real biology, and I failed it spectacularly. <laughs> so um, there's going to be no biology in this, so buckle up. Um, so uh, what I thought I'd talk about today is hydrogen. Um, so I feel like it's pretty well established. Most people accept that uh, fossil fuels, you need to move away from them. They're really bad for the environment. Uh, and alternative energies are something you need to look into. I mean, obviously, there are a couple of uh, notable exceptions of people who would disagree with this. Uh, probably, yeah, to see where this is going. Uh, CEO Shell, maybe, uh, and of course, our newly appointed president elect uh, of the US of A, uh, who actually today has just signed another beautiful piece of legislation undermining all of the work that Obama did uh, to try and stop climate change. So thanks, Donald. Um, but moving away from fossil fuels and towards alternative energies is, you know, one of the big challenges for science. And hydrogen is one of those options. So if you've ever been to a chemistry demo kind of talk, you probably will have seen um, this, uh, someone blowing up a hydrogen balloon. Um, yeah, it's great. It's a classic whiz-bang experiment for chemistry. Uh, and it really shows that you get a lot of energy out of hydrogen, which as an alternative energy source is really what we're looking for. Um, now, towards the end of last year, Mayor of London unveiled uh, the world's first double-decker hydrogen-powered bus. Um, and London being London, we actually already had hydrogen buses. Uh, we just didn't have any double-deckers. So that was really exciting. Um, yeah. um, and also has led to a really great range of exciting photo opportunities with politicians, which I just love. Um, so we can see him looking really happy in a bus. He's um, checking out the engine of a bus in one of them. Here he is looking at this zero emission sign. Um, and I was really hoping that there would be a lot of like great cheesy headlines around this, like London Mayor <coughs> driving us forward, or the wheels on the bus go green, green, green. No? Um, but the, no, the Daily Fell let me down again. Um, but aside from all the great photo ops, um, the thing that's exciting about these hydrogen buses is this zero emissions. So when we use hydrogen, we just make water, which is obviously better from fossil fuels where we produce the carbon dioxide, which is causing climate change. Um, so there's, however, one um, tiny, 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 tiny problem with the hydrogen bus, um, and that's that all the hydrogen that we use to power it has actually come from fossil fuels. Um, so it's sort of a, yeah, just let that one sink in. Um, we've made a renewable alternative energy source and we've just made it from fossil fuels, which we were trying to avoid. Um, but this really sums up the hydrogen research, actually, um, because there's a running joke. Um, it's a science research joke, so don't hold your breath. Um, that hydrogen, widespread hydrogen use, oh, 30 years away. In 30 years, we'll have widespread hydrogen use. Um, and it's funny, because people have been saying that for like the last 100 years since people really first discovered it. Um, and I'm, I'm not really sure if that's funny or just depressing for anyone like me who's working in hydrogen research. Um, but the sort of three big problems really are um, making the hydrogen, uh, storing the hydrogen once you've made it, and then using the hydrogen as well. So sort of everything, really. <laughs> But uh, my research is looking at that first step, so making the hydrogen from non from fossil fuels. Uh, and one of the ways that we can do this is to get it from water. So um, I know there are a lot of biologists in the room, so just a, a reminder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, water. What um, animal is that? <laughs> yeah, well, um, uh, water is made up from two hydrogens and an oxygen, so uh, we can get the hydrogen out of that water and then use that potentially in our buses. Um, and this is, you know, great because we can make the hydrogen from water, we use it, it makes water again, it's a great cycle. Um, obviously you can probably guess that doesn't really work that well. Um, hydrogen and oxygen are bound together really, really strong, so it's pretty difficult to break them apart. Um, and when you do break them apart, they actually don't split up evenly. So that, that maybe sounds a little bit weird. Um, so we're going to get a little bit of audience participation going. So, oh, yeah. um, so 
So, I can't really see, but has anybody here come as a couple? <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> Anyone gonna admit to it? Yeah! Yeah, great! Okay, you don't need to do anything, I'm just gonna ask you questions. So, um, how... <laughs> how long have you guys been dating? How long? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not gone that the way that I imagined. <laughs> Okay, well, skip over that question. Um, do, you, do you guys, you guys must share stuff in your relationship, like you know, DVDs, CDs. Don't make it weird. Yes. Yes. What, like what? Like what? Food. Food. Fine. Fine. Um, that's not really where I was going, but that'll do. Okay, thank you. Um, really, where I was going with this was um, in a relationship. You know, we often share things with our partners. And, um, you know, if you then, I mean, not to now put a big damper on this, if you then break up, what do you do with the stuff that you shared? So, um, for example, I have at least three of my boyfriend's cities and he is never seeing those again. Um, but to bring this back to hydrogen, uh, the bonds in hydrogen and oxygen, when you break them apart, well, no, sorry, uh, the bonds in hydrogen and oxygen, when they bond together, they share electrons. So these are these tiny little particles that are one of the fundamental building blocks of the whole universe. Uh, but when you break apart the bond, those electrons end up with the oxygen and not with the hydrogen. Um, but this then leaves us with hydrogen in a form that we can't use in our bus. Uh, so what we need is the equivalent of your friend who's going to go round to your ex's house and get all your stuff back for you. Um, so I'm trying to make materials that will do that electron shuttling, so moving those electrons from the oxygen and towards the hydrogen. Uh, and it's actually something that needs to be done pretty quickly and pretty efficiently because, um, you know, like some breakups, uh, the water splitting reaction is, um, it requires quite a lot of time uh, and a lot of energy. Um, so being able to do this quickly and efficiently is really important for getting hydrogen on our bus. Uh, so hydrogen is a great potential alternative. There are a whole range of problems with it, but hopefully 30 years, someone will have solved them all. Uh, and just a really uplifting thought to end with, um, if any of you are going through a long, energy-intensive breakup, um, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. The biology can be in all the right places, but if the chemistry ain't there, you haven't got a hope. <laughs>